big terrarium chores and a tour. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, my name is Rose, my pronouns are she, her. And in this video, I'm going to do a tour of the terrarium, but first I did some chores in it that I want to show you. It's about time for some plant chores in the terrarium, especially some stuff is growing wild and it's been annoying me a lot, so let's cut it out. Oh, wow. That's rooted all the way to the soil. Whoa, this whole thing grew from halfway up all the way down into the soil. That is pretty impressive. This plant, by the way, has been struggling with thrips. So that's why it looks so crispy and sad. The last one to cut out is the beautiful Cebu Blue. Maybe here. Ah. Over on this side, there is mainly the Atapapuense that is growing all the way up here, Let's see if we can bend it out. See these? That's not good. So where are we gonna cut you? Roots everywhere too. Come on out. Wow, there's so many roots. Look at this. These roots were growing all the way up to the ceiling from all the way down below. That's very interesting. I don't think I can put them back there. I've taken some accidental cuttings as well. <laughs> Whoops. Then this beautiful big plant, this is my Anthurium queramalens, queramalens, English, I don't know. This is still in a normal pot. So I'm thinking of planting it into the terrarium so it's a little bit less high. It would save about this much space so then it fits nicer in the rest of it. Or I could take it fully out. That's another option. Hmm. But it likes it in here and apparently it's a tricky plant to grow anywhere else. So I think we're gonna go for it. I don't know how though. Oh, it's grown all the way underneath into the soil. Wow. How are we gonna do this? What is this plant? Oh, whoops. Ah, <laughs> look at that. We found a little leaf skeleton that created itself. Okay, here we go. Maybe rescue the baby alocasia from the back. I think that's a Zabrina, a little corn. Plant that down here. Ooh, that's way too moist for it, but... All right, um, take the pot off somehow. I have a pot to put the excess soil in. Hey. There's some rotted roots and leaves. I'm trying to dunk that soil. Okay, I guess I'm vacuuming the house again after. Okay, one, remove excess soil. Ugh, this feels very snotty. I'm not sure if this was such a good idea. Uh, that's a long stem. Okay. This way. It is a lot lower now, so that worked. But the rest is a bit of a mess. Ooh, but we have more light again for the alocasia down here. That worked out pretty well. I have dirty hands, of course. Some of the cuttings I took were definitely on purpose and then others were ex oops, <laughs> accidental. The Cebu Blue was looking really nice at the top actually, growing towards the light. I think I'm gonna pop this on a moss pole. Look at this one. I don't know if you can see. There's a lot of holes in there. And this one as well. Look at those tiny baby holes. That is very cute. So. I think that's gonna do great on a moss pole. It's a little bit long, but it already has a lot of roots growing there. And then we have this guy. This is my Atapapuensi that has been growing literally against the top. So this will also be a lot happier in maybe a moss pole as well. Look at all these roots. Definitely liked it in the terrarium. I know that most of these plants are definitely not terrarium plants. I have a lot of actual terrarium plants in there, but because they stay small, they also grow very slowly. So at some point I was just looking at the bare back wall of that thing and decided to temporarily plant aeroids in there to fill up the space while the terrarium plants took their time to grow. And that's definitely worked out really well. It's been really fun to see the quick new growth of the aeroids. And now that they are getting too big, I just cut them out and then the terrarium plants have more light and are more visible again and becoming the main show basically 
So I don't regret my choices, although they may have been a little bit um, different from what experts would say, <laughs> but I'm happy with my choices. The cuttings I took, the top cuttings I have inside still with me, there is not much root growth yet, unfortunately. Actually, the Atapapuense looks quite sad. It's very droopy, can you see that? And I just took off one of the leaves that rotted away. The Cebu Blue looks okay still, but also I don't see that many roots. I see one, one successful root here. That's on the Cebu Blue, so maybe that's why. It's taking up some water. At the Papuensi, I just see broken off roots, so I might have to rescue that. Also, the stem looks like it's started to rot, see that? All the other cuttings that I took, I moved into the greenhouse because Honestly, I didn't really care for them and lots of thrips on them. I have found thrips all around the house, but I didn't want to spread them anymore with all of those cuttings. One chore that definitely needs doing is cleaning the glass. There's some kind of calcification on the inside. We're gonna use a very dirty <laughs> cloth to clean it at least a little bit. That's actually working much better than I expected. I thought I needed a scraper or something. I will also spray in there, but I will do that after we view the plants first. Let's just start on the top left corner where we have some cool updates. The forgetti looks very sad. It is growing a flower here. Can you see that? And I put some of these in recently. Uh, what are they called? Bromeliads. I have no idea if they're happy, but I'm not touching them. And then up here, we have Hoya Gunungading. It's been growing really well. Oh, up here, put some moss back. I don't know how, but that one is very happy. Came all the way from back there. Some leaves there, up there, happy. This is a little moss that I bought at the My Botanica market. You saw that in last week's video, maybe. It looks a little bit droopy but it also didn't look very happy where I had it before. It didn't get enough light, I think, so I have it up here now, but maybe it's too much light now because this is the grow lights pretty close to it. There's another, what are they called? Bromeliads up here. I just stuck that in there. It feels a little bit solid, so maybe it rooted. Um, let's see. <laughs> Here's my little chameleon that I put in because everyone asks, is there an animal in there? Now I can say yes and then show them this guy. <laughs> Very cute. The back wall here is completely overgrown with Pelonia, or I think they've been reclassified officially. Looks very nice. Oh, here's a half skeleton forgetty leaf still. And this one is also taking over, but look at this. This is my glorious cutting I put in here. There is so much thrips damage on there. There is a ton of mature thrips in the tank at the moment. Let's see if I can find you one. Shouldn't be too hard. I did put a ton of good bugs in here recently, so I don't currently see that many mature thrips anymore. So maybe that's a good sign, but it, yeah, it's been taken over. In the back here, getting not enough light probably, is a beautiful Hoya Thompsoni that has been growing but not a lot because I think it dries out a little bit too much in this pot. I recently watered it, but it feels super dry again already. I think it just falls right through. Hey, there's a Hoya there growing as well. Interesting. <laughs> and oh, there's the other Polonia. This one I love, but it's hidden away with the Hoya Thompsoni leaves, see? I think maybe I should take this guy out. Even though it's making a new leaf, should we wait for the new leaf and then take it out? I don't know. Okay, decisions. The beautiful Atapapuensi that I cut is growing again a little bit, but not a lot. I see some points starting to grow. It's not super fast, but that's okay. And the uh, Anterium Quirma lens actually is growing. Oh, here you can see it. A new leaf since I moved it into full soil. So that is very interesting because I thought it might struggle and not be happy. Oops. 
<laughs> little slug wanted to be on my finger. Luckily, I didn't squish it. We're going to move this outside. We did also have quite a few leaves that died off from this plant, which is normal because that's pretty stressful to be moved from different pots or like into this moist soil down here. It looks like a jungle. Look at that. Then here on the left, I, these are some cuttings of the polonia, but they're actually not planted. Uh, we have a peperomia, a little bobbly one, very cute. That's still growing. I don't know how. And this beautiful begonia chloronura that I planted in here from another tank. And this one as well, the begonia raja. These guys were too big for the small terrarium. This one, they were growing against the top. And it seems like they have adjusted pretty well to life in here. This is a new leaf. I think this is also a new leaf. And I put some uh, jewel orchids in here as well. You can see just the stick over here. That hasn't done anything yet, but we're waiting patiently. Margravia crawling around here. This is my sad old, <laughs> it's not that sad. Look, this is a nice leaf. This is black velvet, Elocasia, and it's growing a new leaf. It's pretty small, but that's okay. The Macoyana, Ruelia Macoyana is growing. I cut that back majorly before. And here, this is a little bit sad. This is the beautiful fern that I bought at the My Botanica Market. Mm. Two of the leaves are dead already. I think I can take them off even now. They're very brown and crispy. A few days ago, they still looked semi-alive. I actually think they're still beautiful. And this one is also looking like it's not super happy, but I think from the roots, it can grow more. I don't know if it's the transition or if it's this spot. I heard they like high humidity and not a lot of light. So that's why they're all the way down here in the terrarium. Here is a gigas actually that I was trying to grow up, but not a lot is happening yet. It's not very happy. This middle beam has quite a few plants that I tried to grow up it. This was lupinum, philodendron lupinum, that is growing all the way up here now. But again, look at that thrips damage. That looks like a completely different plant almost with all the damage. I don't see, again, normally I would easily find mature thrips on here. Oh, is that one? Yeah, there you go. You get to see a thrips. How lucky are you? Oh, two. Let's kill them quickly. The good bugs are at work, but there is a lot to do and I have a new batch coming in soon. So I've tried to like lead this along the stem, but it doesn't really want to do that. Maybe this way. We'll see. Down here on this little squiggly bit, which a lot of people ask me about, it's actually called a liana. It's a vine, a dried vine. I have a lot of orchids and this one especially, it's making this whole new stem and a new leaf. Very, very cute. The older pseudo bulbs, as they're called, are a little bit dehydrated. So I'm trying to spray more in here, be better about the care. But the new one looks very cute, so that's okay. And this orchid as well, this is, I don't know what exactly, but it was flowering a few weeks ago. You can see all the dead flower stems here. There was another orchid on here that is no longer with us, I think. And this guy, look at that. That is Raphidophora cryptantha. I'm not quite sure, it's growing again at least. It's beautiful. And this whole thing is also that same plant, but that wasn't doing much. This is another orchid that gets pretty dry. Actually, it's okay now. I've been trying to be a bit better about watering, but it doesn't look amazing. Some of the dried up flower spikes, it did have some flowers for me. And up in here, we had two alocasia, a jacqueline and something else, but they sadly unalive themselves as well. All right, looking from the other side, you can see my little orchids that I bought at last year's Botanica Market. Look at all of them. They don't look like they've grown a lot, but if you look very, very close, oh, it's actually maybe open now or budding up. There's some flower spikes. There's actually quite a few flower spikes on this one. So that's a good sign. And I have seen new growth on this as well. I don't know if we'll be able to see it now, but there's a tiny leaf that grows and then it falls off and just a little blob, the pseudo bulb stays. See, that looks pretty fresh. So it doesn't look super happy, but I think it's alive. And this one, I honestly don't know how to tell, but so far I think it's okay. 
And this one ooh, was the last, oh, clearly I didn't look in here for a while. Yeah, that's dead. Hmm. I took a closer look. It is in a very strange medium, which I already knew, but it looks maybe I can rescue some of these pseudo bulbs and regrow it. But I'm going to take this out as a to-do. There's definitely a few dead plants here. We can take this out, actually. This was a Hoya. This Hoya also is no longer with us. Come on out. I think it dried up too much in the wall because I didn't water that during... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I didn't water the terrarium during the renovation. But I guess that means there's a lot of new space to plant little plants. That's fun. Over here we have some of that moss that was in the little pot over there. It fell out and then I just stuck it in here in the soil with the Peperomia prostrata and Hoya linearis that is still alive. I think it's still growing also. So that's nice. My big one is upstairs not looking too happy and this is growing. This is some other moss that I planted on there that's not doing great. It's still alive over there but it's definitely too dry. And then this is a little orchid that is flowering. I've had this for a while. Look at this. Well, it's not flowering yet. It's made a flower spike. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on that for an update. Then down here on the squiggly bit, we have, I think it's a Phalaenopsis marmoratum, something like that. That seems to be doing okay. Lots of roots and a micans back here. That looks very nice. So up here, this is the Cebu Blue that we propagated earlier in this video for me several weeks ago. And you can see it's growing already. There's some points, different points growing. I really hope that it will look really nice again without the thrips this time. In here, we have the plants from the My Botanica Market. So this is the little fern that I bought. This is the little plant that's actually related to the, or is in the nettle family, not a fern like I may have said in a previous video. And the Archostema, I think, I'm not quite sure. One of those that mm, doesn't look amazing. The new leaf seems to have crisped up a little bit. So I'm keeping an eye on that one. And these are all sitting in the pot together where the queen used to be because the queen wasn't happy. I don't know if I filmed that. Several weeks ago, I took the queen out of here. Was it you? Are you calling me? So I would just popped a little pot upside down in here so they are high up enough and get a little bit more light. Up here, we have a few Hoya that are not doing anything. There's clear signs of flat mites on this one. If you don't know what that looks like, it tries to grow, but then it can't. And there's a Hoya curtisi that's still alive and growing all over the place. A Hoya viola cutting back here that hasn't done anything in years. And then we have this one. <laughs> this I really thought was dead. This is a... An octocilus, so it's a jewel orchid. I kind of threw it away, but now it's growing again. So it gets to live here again and get the light and everything. Hoya elliptica lives here that grew a tendril, but then it didn't do anything probably to do with the flat mites and the thrips and everything. And also maybe it getting too dry here in this little mm, moss blob, I would call it. There's a fern here that is definitely gone all crispy and dead. Can you even see that back there? In the back wall, we have some things that are working out. Oh, I kind of want to take this. Yeah, these are some of the leftover roots of other plants that were growing up here before. But this beautiful plant is the Tylandicum metallicum, or the other way. It's a fern. It's called the blue oil fern. You may have seen that on my account before and look at it it's growing so happily apparently these are very very tricky to grow but it just lives in the wall here and it seems very happy there's a new frond new leaf coming right there see how cute is that and i just noticed this it was the siltipacana that i cut back also growing a leaf again so that's going well let's see there is a tiny adorable fern here that i did not plant but that is very welcome to stay and there's some kind of mossy something on the moss there. Here's more Siltipagana coming from below. Oh, and that moss, that fern also grows here. And the dead mycans leaf, ignore that. 
On the back wall, we have a few more. This is a Ficus Pumila, I think. You can see it a little bit better here. Look at that, the little oak leaf Ficus growing all over the place. So that's growing really well. I'm happy with that. And the Calathea mosaica, or whatever you call it, network plant. That seems to be okay in here as well. And a little Brantianum in the back there that I forgot about. This is a beautiful Anthurium hybrid that is a little bit of a mystery. It had some struggle, let's see. Yeah, no, there's no new leaves yet. Had some struggle with slugs on it, but it looks beautiful. And it seems to be happier in that spot than the other plants that I had there before. It has a beautiful new root, by the way. Look at that fuzziness, very cool. And I remembered that in here, I planted some ferns as well. Look, this is the blue oil fern as well. It's growing. You can see some new fronds there. And this plant I thought had died. This little one, I planted in here a while ago. That also seems to be coming back. So something made it uh, of most of the plant died, but that part made it. And there is some moss, which I'm happy about. Oh, look at this. Showing you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Maybe you think this is beautiful. It kind of looks cool. This is a dead glorious leaf. Can you see some thrips on there? Mm, no. So I'm happy with that. In front is a little orchid that's growing quite a lot. Look at all the new roots and leaves. This orchid keeps falling down. Doesn't look super happy, although there, this I think is new. This one is also not looking amazing, but there is a new leaf. I want to fill this up, all the little curves with orchids. But <laughs> these orchids are so pricey that it's a little bit tricky. And I bought these for it, but I can't move them over because, yeah, that's you need a little pot and then to plop it in there. So there's still plenty of space for more. I am going to Botanica again in Germany next week. So maybe I'll find some orchids for there. Hiding back here is a Begonia ferox that I kind of tied up like this because the leaves are so big that they take over light from all my other begonia that I'll show you in a sec. So this is growing, it's making a new, new leaf, but I don't think it's super happy. It's too dark and it's not getting the space that it deserves. This is a begonia that looks actually very blue. It's just a pretty common one that I threw in here and then it died and then it came back. Looks really nice now. And the Selaginella ansinata is growing like crazy. Dead Mikan's leaf. This is so easy and so fun to grow in terrariums. I also had a begonia back here that I currently don't see anymore. It was the the really nice one. What is it called? Um, with the blue uh, Sarawak. That's now disappeared, but it might come back. You never know with begonia. Then we have, <laughs> I think the star of the show at the moment, my Selaginella Wildendowi. This is a very, very blue. Is it a combination between a moss and a fern? I'm not quite sure, but look at the colors. This is such a cool plant and it's growing in a nice direction now because it's growing up here instead of all over here like it was before. I took some cuttings, like here you can see I chopped it off and then it's growing again from here. This is also new growth. And the handy thing with these is that they grow little tendrils down. You can see it here as well when I was pulling it forward. Can you? Yeah, there's these tendrily root things that are just reaching towards the soil or towards something to grab onto. Actually, there's an alocasia there as well. It was a silver dragon. I hope it comes back. And this one is growing against the window. So I might at some point when it has rooted into the soil itself, take that out and move it somewhere else. I put some moss in here and there's some nice Alabicia in here, or maybe it's a different name, but I always forget with this one. This is growing a new leaf. Although all the leaves are pointing down, which I don't like that much. You can point up, you can be proud. This is Begonia species Trung that actually has been growing. I should take some cuttings because this is the only part that I have and it's not in a great spot <laughs> to show you because of everything in, in front of it. Mm -hmm. 
And then the Labisia turtleback, which is growing okay as well. These can grow huge. Mine isn't yet though, but maybe in the future. And some dead leaves that we can take out again. All right, moving over to the left. There are two Labisia. This is a pretty big one. I think Pumila, but I'm not quite sure. That's making a new leaf. You can see here, there's a little growth. I think it struggled for a little bit and then it came back strong with this big leaf. Such a cool plant. I love Labisia so much. And this one is actually pretty plain compared to some others. Like look at this one. This has a very bright pink vein that's growing well. Very happy with that. And there's a few more that I'll show you over here. But wait, let me show you this first. This was a begonia, species China, I think. Yes, that disappeared, died completely. And then a year later, all of a sudden, it started to grow again. That's what I love about terrariums and just leaving them. Because if this would have been in a pot, I would have thrown the pot away and it would be gone. But now we still have it. Then we have this. Oh, one of my favorites. This is an Argos. Oh, why do I always forget the names of these? Acantera. Acantera. That's it. Acantera. It is amazing. I love it a lot. And a Labisia over on this side with velvet and pink. That is amazing. Everything is growing into each other. So that makes it a little bit harder. Like this begonia as well, by the way. This. Ah! <laughs> I cannot reach and show you. This begonia was the same story. It died back completely. I thought it was gone. And now it's growing again. Look at all of these leaves. There's quite a few. It's a beautiful one. It's Taoyuan Kuang, which now I think has been renamed. This is a Labisia that I bought a while ago from Ruprobe with red pink edges. It's growing a new leaf again. Very, very cute. And here we have one of my favorite begonia of all time. This is begonia gogoensis. I love it so much. It currently has three leaves and it's being a little bit overgrown by everything, but I guess it's okay. More dead mycon leaves. It's just such a beautiful one and surrounded by Selaginella. I love this. So there's a few plants. Oh, I haven't showed you this yet. This is a very basic begonia with pink spots. That looks a bit bare, but it's growing again from different places, so it's okay, it gets to stay. As you can see, some of the plants have done really well and some haven't, but you never know in this terrarium, they might crawl back up again and regrow. Some of the ones that we propagated earlier on in the video are also alive again and growing, so I'm excited about that. And there is a lot more to do, more chores, more ideas that I have, especially regarding moss. I would love this to be super jungly, moist, moss everywhere staying alive. But from my experience so far, at the bottom, it's wet enough and moist enough for the moss. But at the top, it's definitely not. The whole back wall is also pretty dry at the like two thirds to the top. So either I'm gonna install a rain system, which is a little bit scary because it can definitely make it too wet for the plants at the bottom or I just need to spray more often in there manually. I don't know yet. Let me know what you think in the comments. That would be very helpful. But for now, that is it for this terrarium update. If you have any specific questions, definitely let me know in the comments below. I do have the whole build process in a playlist that I will link. So that will probably answer any questions you have about the setup. I would love your input and I hope you enjoyed this very much. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.